this special video celebrating the much loved Class 50 that this year, 2017, becomes 50 years old. To mark this, Hornby have released catalogue number R3571 Special Edition D400 in original blue livery. D400 would later become 50050 and was named Fearless. I was really looking forward to this model and eagerly unpacked it when it arrived, but disaster. When I opened the packing, buffers and other bits fell off, and it looked like an attempt to glue things had been made with super glue, and worse still, the cab front was split. I was truly shocked at this lack of quality control, and quickly let Rails of Sheffield know about it. They were really helpful, and even sent a prepaid note for me to send it back. After letting others know, it became apparent I was not alone, and even the Hatton's advert for the loco was seen to be missing a buffer. Better news was to come, however. Around a week later, Rails sent me my replacement loco that they had very carefully checked for me, and happily, she was in perfect condition. I await Hornby's response, and today received an email from them explaining they were still waiting on a reply from their quality control manager, and will respond back to me as soon as they can. So we can now get on with the review of this rather stunning and iconic model and take a little look at the history of this fine English electric locomotive. Okay, Class 50 has working louvers according to the instructions. And the supplied tool there you can see sticking out, which engages in a little lug just inside the body. Now if I move it, very difficult to do whilst holding the camera. You can see that moving it the right way does just open and close the louvers, which really happens on the real thing. Um, a lovely feature, good idea. For me, I'm just going to be leaving them half and half slightly open. But yeah, full marks for trying that idea. Okay, another unique little feature. Well, it's not quite unique actually, because the Hornby 08 does this, but we have opening cab doors, look. So, as soon as you shrink yourself a little small enough, you can actually go in and drive her away. Cool, eh? Then we have a Lima and the new Hornby compared. Now body removal requires you to remove the ETH electric train heating jumpers. You actually remove them off the front of the low coat. They are there. And it goes in, in those two holes later. You're going to lose a bit of paint when you do it. Which is a shame, but you can't remove the other ones where they're connected to that side because they're glued on. So it is off the front to open the low coat for those waiting to install DCC etc. Now I'm going to do it just to have a look and because there's a bit of a scraping noise and I want to get to the bottom of it. Okay to remove the body you need your bits of plastic again down the sides quite tight and the clips seem to extend a long way into the body. Now once you get it off you discover that for some reason there was adhesive where the clips attached to the body. Uh, it looks like um, double sided sticky tape. And you can see the arrangement for the moveal um, louvers there. We've got one bulkhead that's fallen off. We've got our fan that goes round. We've <laughs> even got little vent fans there. And uh, so now I'm going to carry out the lubrication uh, in accordance to Hornby's instructions. Now the fan unit actually looks like it could have been intended to be driven but there is nothing connected to it um, and so it doesn't turn around. Now we're just having a look now at the louver function as you see that's where the little tool hooks into when it's uh, in use but I've found that this side doesn't move at all it appears to be glued in place and never mind as I say it's, it's a nice idea but uh, not particularly effective. Now we're starting to look at the accessory pack now for those wanting to fit the snow ploughs, um, there is only enough snow ploughs to do one end in the pack. Um, I don't think I'm going to fit them myself because I want to see all the pipes and things. So here are the accessories. We have 
four main res pipes, four engine speed, two brake pipes, and two vacuum wraparound pipes there. So as you can see D400 runs very smoothly indeed, no problem over points and extremely quiet. There were 50-50s and they were constructed by English Electric at their Vulcan foundry. They were a development of DP2. D400 was constructed from 1966, but she was not completed until September 1967. It was handed over to BR and commenced a series of test operations. Unusually, the Class 50s were leased from English Electric to British Railways. Eventually British Rail purchased the locomotives. From 1972, as the diesel hydraulic fleet was run down, the Class 50s transferred to the Western Region, and by 1976 all 50 locomotives had been transferred. Initially they didn't do too well, with availabilities as low as 50%. A general refurbishment program took place and this produced a far better locomotive. Lera and Old Old Common became their depots. Once they were on the western region they gained their names and they were named after naval shore establishments. In February 1984, 50007 was selected for renaming and became Sir Edward Elgar and was turned out in lovely Great Western Green. That's as you see the Lima model now. So what about the Class 50 specifications? Well, they were capable of 100 miles an hour. The engine horsepower was 2,700 and the engine was a 16 CSVT. Tractive effort was a reasonable 48,500 pounds.
If you do decide to buy Hornby's D400, their box has a very good history printed on the back. So what is my summary of this locomotive? Well, it is a really nice locomotive conceptually. It's beautifully produced. However, it's badly let down by poor quality control and assembly problems. It'll be up to the end user to decide whether they want to buy one. As a tip, if you're gonna buy one from a distance, have the shop check them very thoroughly first to make sure there are no loose bits or, sn or split ends. Hornby have responded a little bit to me, saying that it isn't a problem with the Marzac and that they certainly weren't reworked locomotives. So we will have to wait and see what their quality control management turns up. It's a shame that this otherwise lovely locomotive has been let down. going so well and just as she was trundling around a buffer dropped off unbelievable